always, please pause the video and try this question on your own before listening on. Our first step in solving this problem is, of course, to draw a free body diagram. And we'll draw a free body diagram of the plank that the woman is resting on. Now, there turns out to be three forces acting on the plank. Perhaps the most obvious force is the weight of the woman that is pushing downward on the plank. So we've labeled that W and have directed that force down. Perhaps less obvious are the forces that we've labeled F sub G1 and F sub G2. F sub G1 is the reading on the scale, and that reading comes about because the plank is pushing down on the scale. But if the plank pushes down on the scale, that means that the scale is pushing back up on the plank. That's actually an example of Newton's third law. The same thing is happening over on the right side with this scale. That scale has a reading of F sub G2. That's because the plank is pushing down on the scale. But if the plank pushes down on the scale, that means the scale is going to push back up on the plank. And so that would be the force that we've labeled F sub G2, and then also F sub G1, those upward acting forces. We've labeled the distances in blue, and then we also have an arbitrary point that we've labeled P. We'll come back to that later. After drawing and understanding the free body diagram, our next step is to look at Newton's second law which of course says that the sum of the forces is equal to ma. Now in this case, the plank is at equilibrium, and what that means is the acceleration is equal to zero. So actually the right side of this equation can be set equal to zero. We'll notice that there are forces acting only in the vertical or y direction, and what we're going to do is sum them and put them into this part of the equation. Now the w force is acting downward, so when we put that into the formula, we have to make sure that we call it negative. The FG forces are acting upward, so those will be positive in the formula. Let's go ahead and plug them in. Of course, the values for FG1 and FG2 were given in the formula as 380 and 320 newtons, so we can fill those in. And then we can add W to both sides of the equation. And from this result, we can see that the weight of the woman is 700 newtons. Now, of course, that wasn't what the question was asking, but that might be a useful result. Now, since we know the plank is in equilibrium, that also means that the sum of the torques is going to equal zero. We'll recall that torque is equal to a force multiplied by a distance and then multiplied by the sine of an angle. Now, the distance is going to be the distance from the force to a pivot point. And then the angle will be the angle between the force and the object. We'll notice that the angles between the forces and the plank are all 90 degrees because the forces are acting perpendicular to the plank. As far as the pivot is concerned, that's where the point that we labeled P earlier will come in handy. We're going to call this point the pivot. So with that idea in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to find the torques and plug them into the sum of the torque equation. One thing to note is that the force F sub G2 is passing directly through the pivot. And any force that passes directly through the pivot will have a torque equal to zero. So in essence, we don't have to include that force in the torque equation. I'll say that again because it's really important. Any force that is passing directly through the pivot, just like F sub G2 is, will have a torque of zero. And so it can be excluded from the sum of the torques. Another thing we want to notice is whether the torque produced by W is positive or negative, and also the torque produced by FG1. You'll notice that W is acting downward, and in that case, it's trying to rotate the plank in a counterclockwise fashion. Now, counterclockwise rotation is considered to be positive torque. F sub G1, on the other hand, is pushing up on the plank, and it's tending to try to rotate the plank in a clockwise fashion, and clockwise turns out to be negative torque. So when we plug into the formula, we have to make sure the torque produced by FG is negative and the torque produced by W is positive. So with all those ideas in mind, why don't we go ahead and plug into the sum of the torques equals zero. We'll do the work down here. So just notice that each torque has a force multiplied by a distance and then multiplied by the sine of an angle, just as we stated earlier. For the W torque, remember that the distance was marked as X because that was the distance from W to that arbitrary pivot point. For FG1, that distance was 2 meters, and that's why we've plugged in 2 right there. The sine of 90 is equal to 1. You can check that on your calculator just to confirm. So those will actually cancel out. Why don't we add 2 FG1 to the other side? We could then divide both sides by W. And now X is easily solved because we know FG1 and we know W that we calculated earlier. 
And when we simplify that on our calculators, we get approximately 1.09 meters for the value of x. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can also send in your own question from your textbooks to the following email address on your screen.